May 10th, somewhere around there. Your cities and your counties and your area are going to get a direct cash deposit from the federal government. Over in Alabama, we have a next move group search where the Jasper Industrial Development Authority is looking for their next executive director. Google plans to further expand its data center operations in Monk's Corner, South Carolina. This gives lenders and community partners more time to work with the smallest businesses to submit their applications. By the way, Mississippi State beat Kentucky, so it was a good day at the SEC tournament. Jack Nicholas has a great tip that I think will help many, many people. He never grounded the club. Next Move Group, the voice of economic development. Here is Chad Chancellor. Hello, this is Chad Chancellor, co-founder of Next Move Group. Welcome to this week's YouTube Economic Development Newscast. The voice of economic development was another good week for Next Move Group. We now are doing executive searches for Jasper, Alabama. You all probably seen that. And we got retained to do executive search for Pinellas County, Florida, which is the St. Pete side of Tampa over on the water. Absolutely beautiful area. Going to be a great job for somebody. So you'll be seeing that information coming out very, very soon. And for those of you wondering, did I wear blue to the SEC tournament for the Kentucky Mississippi State game? I did. Here is a picture of me in my blue. I never said that I would not wear a Mississippi State face mask. And by the way, Mississippi State beat Kentucky. So it was a good day at the SEC tournament. Yes, we got embarrassed by Alabama the next day, but who cares? We beat Kentucky. I did have on blue. It was a shade of blue. Nobody can argue that, and so my bet was fulfilled. I want to talk this week about the stimulus money that is coming out. So for those of you out there who don't really know a lot about it, you need to study it, and you need to study it quick. Basically, 60 days from, I believe it was March the 11th, so May 10th, somewhere around there, your cities and your counties and your area are going to get a direct cash deposit from the federal government. And this is part of the COVID Recovery Act. And some of this money can be spent on economic recovery. Matter of fact, a lot of it can be spent on that. And so as economic developers, you need to know this money is coming. And I have seen towns getting millions. Orleans Parish, where I live, got like $380 million. Little hometown I grew up in Mississippi got, I think, $1.5 we were in small towns last week. They got 10 million, 15 million. Every city and every county is getting some. Even some townships that aren't official cities are getting some. So this money is going to show up right around May 10th or May 11th. So as economic developers, I encourage you get a plan of things that you want to do with this money to help grow your economy and help your businesses. From getting stimulus money to your businesses, helping with payroll, Infrastructure, I'm sure you're going to be able to spend on this. Workforce development, you're going to be able to spend on this, so on and so forth. It's going to be very important that economic developers come up with a plan so your elected officials don't go out there and spend the money on things that really does not pertain to economic development. So this money is going to be flowing about May the 10th or 11th. I'm sure you're going to have to bid things, so don't run out there and spend it before you get it. But it's a cash deposit. It's not a reimbursement. This is cash that's going to be put in the government's literal checking accounts. So what's going to happen? They're going to put 50% in right around May 10th, 11th, something like that. They get the other 50% next year right around March. So they're only going to get 50% now, 50% next year around March. And they have to spend all the money within three years. So around March of 2024. And based on how big of a town you're in, it could be a whole lot of money. So as economic developers, sit down and really think about how to get help to your businesses, how to run infrastructure, how to do workforce development type programs. We're going to be coming out with ideas for you over the coming weeks. We're getting into it right now. We're studying what's in that legislation right now. We're going to be coming out with ideas for you because I sit in your seat. And what you don't want is for your elected officials and councils to spend that money on things that aren't going to grow the economy in the name of economic development. You know, what we want to employ you to do is really figure out how to spend this money in ways that are going to spur your economy. Because this could be a chance of a lifetime for some of you. Maybe you've been looking at buying an industrial park, running infrastructure. You hadn't had the money to do it. Now you're going to. We won a couple other deals this week. A new executive search down in Texas that we'll be telling you about in a few weeks. And then up in the Joplin, Missouri area, the MoCan Partnership 
has hired us to put a narrative behind their targeted industry sector. So they have targeted industry sectors with various data, and they have engaged us to tell the story, to take that data and tell a story about why industry should go there. It is a partnership between counties in Arkansas, Missouri, and Kansas, right around that Joplin area. We're really excited about that. I love telling stories, particularly with data. So we're looking forward to completing that project. Don't forget that during March, we're running a special on our labor advantage report our workforce advantages analysis. So we came out with this way before we ever knew the stimulus money was coming, but we're out with it. So you might want to take advantage of it now because we're offering this product at a discount March only. We're basically, we come into your community, we interview your current employers, we survey them, and we figure out what are your workforce advantages at various wage levels. So a lot of communities and economic developers only have one workforce study, and it'll say these are the workers within a 60-mile radius or within an hour drive time, and I have found that's not a good way to do it. You want to be able to show employers for these skills, this is your workforce. For this pay, this is your workforce. Rest assured, at $20 an hour, your workforce is different than at $15 an hour. So what we do is come in and survey them and then list all of your advantages in a narrative-like form, kind of what we're going to do up in the Joplin area, in a narrative form so you can hand it to a prospect. And if they're at $12 an hour, it tells them these are your advantages. If they're at 20, these are your advantages. So many companies just say, I can't get labor. Labor is supply and demand. Defend yourself by knowing your advantages. Now, Will we find disadvantages in your labor market at $12 an hour? Sure, we will. We're not going to put them in this report. We'll tell them to you. They won't be in the report. It's something we'll be emailing out. This is something you might want to consider, especially as this economy takes back off, being able to defend the labor shed you have at certain wage rates. And as I wind down my segment, you're going to get an email from us this week on what would interest you in terms of videos of training your staff. Our movement members have asked us to come out with an online course about training new staff members. Not sure yet how many videos it's gonna be. We may have one on how to do RFIs, how to do your buildings and sites, how to, you know, who knows what needs to be on your website. What we wanna know from you is what really would interest you. If you had a video when you hired somebody new, that was smart, but really hadn't been in economic development, what would you want them to know? If you said, hey, before you start, sit and watch these videos, maybe it's two or three hours worth of them, sit and watch them to give them a baseline and then use that to go back and forth. We're going to send you all an email this week asking you what would really help you because our movement members have asked for it. We're going to produce this in April and come out with it in May. But before we do it, I want to know from you, what would really help you if you had videos to train new staff people? What would help you get your point across to them, get them off to the right foot so you had to spend less time really teaching them the fundamentals of economic development? And lastly, this week's golf tip comes from Jack Nicklaus, the man that won more majors than anybody. The Masters will be rolling around soon. He won six of them. So he's the one to listen to when it comes to golf. Jack Nicklaus has a great tip that I think will help many, many people. He never grounded the club. Go back and watch him or just Google Jack Nicholas hover it. He hovered the club. So when he teed off or chip shot anything, he never put the club on the ground. He held it barely off the ground. What that helped him do was take it away smooth. If you've got that club pushed into the ground, when you take it away, you might rise up on it. Your wrist might break. If you have it there above the ground, I hit my microphone. Hope that didn't bother you. If you have it above the ground, you'll take it away smoothly. Now, this not only helps you off the tee. If you get in a fairway bunker, you really can't ground the club there. You're going to be used to not grounding the club. If you have a tough chip shot in deep rough and you ground the club to where the ball will move, you'll get assist the penalty stroke. If you use Jack Nicholas's tip, you never ground that club. He never grounded the club. He said it helped him keep the right grip pressure, helped him with his takeaway, helped him. He was probably the best long iron player ever. It'll really help you with your long irons, your fairway woods, Simple tip, don't start with that club right behind the ball sitting on the ground. Have it barely above it. That's going to take you some getting used to. It's going to take you probably two or three weeks to get used to this. But once you get used to it, it'll probably save you a stroke around. Due to various demands on time and resources, economic development and trade and export agencies often struggle to complete effective market research and business outreach campaigns. For the past 10 plus years, Research FDI, along with our affiliated consulting groups at Research B2B and FDI 365, have leveraged our in-house knowledge, resources, and expertise in market research and consulting 
to help over 250 organizations directly facilitate inward investment attraction and new trade and export opportunities for their regions across a wide variety of industry sectors. Our highly personalized services and best cost to quality ratio in the industry ensures our client satisfaction, leading to repeat customers year after year. What are you waiting for? Leave the market research and business outreach to the expert team at Research FDI. To learn more about our services, contact us today. Welcome back to the Your Next Move section of this week's newscast. There's a ton of roles available across the U.S., but I'm going to focus on some of what I would call key roles. We're going to start out in Georgia with the Conyers Rockdale Economic Development Council. They're looking for their next president and CEO. Rockdale is located in the Atlanta metro area and has a population that has grown by 34% since the year 2000. Some of the key responsibilities for this role include both commercial and industrial recruitment and retention, in addition to a focus on strategic initiatives that grow and maintain jobs and increase the tax base. To apply, visit the chaseongroup.com or call Tim Chase on at 404-735-0540. Next up in Florida, Sarasota County is looking for their next president and CEO. This person will be coordinating all economic development uh, activities with local, state, and regional boards and entities. To apply, to nominate someone, or to request additional details, email sarasota at jci-inc.net. Moving over to Colorado, the Downtown Denver Partnership is looking for their next Senior Vice President of Economic Development. The Downtown Denver Partnership is a fast-moving, forward-thinking nonprofit with a firm belief that every day is another chance to make the city a little bit better. The next SVP will be supported by a 700 member organization as they serve as the leading voice for private sector business in downtown Denver. Contact downtown Denver SVP at cornferry.com for more information. Over in Alabama, we have a next move group search where the Jasper Industrial Development Authority is looking for their next executive director. Uh, Jasper is looking for someone who can create a constant flow of industrial prospects for their community. A bachelor's degree is preferred in the field of business or something to, similar to public administration, as well as seven years in local or regional economic development. The salary range is one hundred to one hundred and twenty-five thousand, and the full profile can be viewed at thenextmovegroup.com backslash Jasper, or you can contact me for more information at 504-615-7174. You'll submit your resume and writing samples to Jasper, the next move group.com. The deadline to apply for this role is April 1st at noon Central Standard Time. Over in California, out west, the city of Bakersfield is looking for their next economic and community director. So technically, this person will be leading a new division in the development department, and their goal will be to focus on economic development as a top priority. You can visit the city's website and search under news and highlights for more information. Also, the additional application phase will, uh, will end March 22nd, so get your applications in for that if you're interested. Last but not least, the city of Pasco, Washington is looking for their next economic development manager. This person will help the local economy through business development, retention, and attraction. It's essential that the next economic development manager has the knowledge of federal, state, and local economic development programs, regulations, real estate finance, and development. You can contact Delaney Tal at tald at pasco-wa.gov. This position will close on April 1st. That'll be all for this week's session of Your Next Move and good luck on the job search. Hello, this is Brandon Nettles. In this week's Rounding the Basis segment, I'll be detailing new industrial announcements from across America. Starting us off this week, Japan-based Fujifilm will look at new production in Holly Springs, North Carolina. The more than $2 billion project is expected to create 725 highly skilled jobs in the area by the end of 2028. Kirchhoff Automotive, uh, they're a German-based international supplier to the automotive industry. They're going to invest $15 million in opening an assembly facility in Lawrenceville, Georgia. Diago North America will expand its manufacturing footprint and production at a new facility in Plainfield, Illinois. The project is expected to create 50 new jobs. Cereal Ingredients will invest $24 million to build a new facility in St. Joseph, Missouri. 
company plans to create more than 60 jobs by the end of 2027. Google plans to further expand its data center operations in Monk's Corner, South Carolina. The expansion is uh, projected to bring more than 500 million in capital investment to Berkeley County. Shambo and Sons is constructing a fabrication facility in Kingman, Arizona. The project is expected to create 60 new jobs. Innovations Foods plans to build a 45 million processing and packaging facility in Millville, New Jersey. Switzerland-based uh, Syngenta Crop Production will invest 68 million in a new production complex and HQ in Greensboro, North Carolina. Deer and Company is expanding operations in Springfield, Missouri. Um, they're planning to add 130 new jobs. Tyson Foods plans to reestablish re operations in Richland County, South Carolina. That's going to be a $55 million investment and create 330 new jobs. Arrival will be building its second U.S. micro factory in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, that's going to add 250 new jobs to Mecklenburg County. Royal Canaan will invest $200 million to expand their operations center in Wilson County, Tennessee. That project is expected to create over 90 jobs. Electra Mechania plans to locate its U.S.-based assembly facility and engineering technical center in Mesa, Arizona. That project is expected to create up to 500 new jobs. NTT Data will invest $9.9 million to establish an innovation and digital delivery center in Nashville, Tennessee. And uh, that company is planning to create 350 new jobs. 310 Tempering is opening a new production and manufacturing facility in Carroll County, Maryland. Um, that project is expected to create 80 new full-time jobs by 2025. Accelerate 360 will be expanding operations with the opening of a facility in Olaf, Kansas. The project is expected to create 167 new full-time jobs. Matulsa Structural Products plans to expand its operations in Hopkinsville, Kentucky. Um, they're expected to create 97 full-time jobs over the coming years. IA plans to open the company's Global HQ in Indianapolis, Indiana, creating 420 new high-wage jobs by 2023. Finally, KDC1, uh, they're a Canadian-based contract manufacturer of personal care products. They're going to invest $90 million to expand into a new production facility in Groveport, Ohio. Um, that's going to round us out for this week. If you have any announcements that you would uh, like us to feature, you can reach out to me and let me know, and I'll see you next time. Hey, everyone. It's Gabby Molis, and welcome to this week's Money Lab segment. In this week's Lenny Lab, I'm going to go over that $1.9 trillion COVID-19 relief bill that was recently passed. Um, in that relief bill, about $50 billion was dedicated towards aiding small businesses, so I'm going to dive into that further. The first thing on the checklist that I'm going to talk about today is the $28.6 billion that's dedicated towards aiding restaurants. The Restaurant Rescue Plan is a tool to provide dedicated tax-free funding to the smaller independent restaurants and bars who lack reserves and the kind of banking relationships to allow them to access PPP and other government loans and flexible lending facilities to withstand present and future losses. So the Restaurant Revitalization Grant does not have to be paid back since it is a grant, so that is huge, and applications will be administered through the SBA. This fund was quickly established, so the SBA is still creating rules and regulations for how businesses can apply. Um, while waiting for the program, the SBA recommends that restaurants should begin gathering their expense reports, financial statements, and tax returns. And there are many useful articles where you can find more information on this. I found more information on cbsnews.com slash news slash restaurant revitalization fund American Rescue Plan. So another aspect of the bill is the part that aids specifically small businesses. The Economic Injury Disaster Loan advance grants up to $10,000 per small business, and the purpose of this is to help small businesses meet financial obligations and operating expenses that could have been met at um, had the disaster not occurred. You can learn more on how your business can apply for this at sba.gov slash funding program slash loan slash COVID-19 relief options slash COVID-19 economic injury disaster loan. The next part of the SBA bill that I'm going to talk about today is basically how they extended the time period that small businesses can apply for the PPP loans or the Paytech Protection Program loans. 
The PPP loan is designed to provide direct incentive for small businesses to keep their workers on payroll. Borrowers may be eligible for PPP loan forgiveness, um, specifically on February 24th of 2021 at 9 a.m., the SBA established a 14-day exclusive PPP loan application period for businesses and nonprofits with fewer than 20 employees. So this gives lenders and community partners more time to work with the smallest businesses to submit their applications, um, while also ensuring, ensuring that larger PPP eligible businesses still have plenty of time to apply and receive support before the program expires on March 31st of 2021. And another $7 billion will be directed towards allowing more PPP loans and expanded eligibility for certain pro nonprofit and digital media companies. So you can learn more about this exclusive PPP loan application on sba.gov slash COVID-19 guidance resources. Well, that's all for this week and until next time.